Gorsuch, well, another likely contender in the Republican presidential primary, is former Vice President Mike Pence. Pence is not officially announced yet, but he too was in New Hampshire this week speaking to voters, and that is a sure sign to many that he also is preparing a White House bid. For more on the growing field of GOP hopefuls, let's go to Mark Short, former chief of staff for former Vice President Pence. Mark, good to have you here. Um, is the vice president still deciding whether to run or deciding when to announce? Uh, that's a great question, Elizabeth. I think that, uh, you know, he has been very open about the prayerful process that he went through with his family and in, in, um, in making a decision. He has nothing to announce right now. But uh, as you noted, he was in New Hampshire last week. He'll be in Iowa next week and, uh, and another trip to Iowa scheduled a week after that. So, uh, uh, he's been very encouraged by the support that he's been getting from Americans who are looking for a new style of leadership and understand the vast experience that he brings to the equation. Well, that certainly sounds like the travel schedule of a candidate for president. Um, but I'd like to get your reaction to Governor DeSantis's comments that there are only three viable candidates so far and Pence is not one of them. Well, I don't think that's uh, surprising that that's something that Governor DeSantis would say. I think that the governor has had a, a strong record uh, in Florida, but I think that certainly the last couple months have been uh, very challenging for him and his team with a lot of uh, a lot of different news that's broken out of Florida. So I'm not sure that he's entering this race at the strongest point. And I'd say that, uh, you know, for former Vice President Pence, uh, he's had experience not just as 12 years in House of Representatives and as a governor, but he also has unique experience as a vice president and dealing on the world stage with uh, foreign leaders. And so uh, I think that there's there's a different level of experience and character that comes to the equation with Vice President Pence should he enter this race. You know, it's interesting, Mark, in this call with donors, DeSantis talked a lot about his legislative achievements as governor, but he did not address the news yesterday that Disney is canceling its planned billion dollar office project in Orlando meaning the state will lose a lot of money, 2,000 high-paying jobs. Vice President Pence said this morning that Floridians will now suffer because of DeSantis's feud with Disney, saying the business of America is business. Do you think this whole DeSantis-Disney imbroglio will hurt his presidential campaign? I don't know that it really hurts. I think that there's been a lot of concern about uh, corporate America that is that has gone awfully woke. And I think that, frankly, a lot of Americans supported Governor DeSantis' position and I think supported Republicans in Florida when they took a position that said, we're not going to be teaching explicit sexual material and transgender material in grades K through three. I think the vast majority of Americans agree with that. I think the question was, after that, I think the governor used very explicit language and said he was going to retaliate and, and instead said we're going to have specific tax increases targeted toward one company and proposed toll roads for one company. I think that's something as limited government conservatives, there's been a great concern that that's been a tactic that the left has often right. used in going after corporate America. So it wasn't the original fight. I think he's, he's actually on very solid ground there and I think has a lot of conservative support for his positions against Disney. It was going those extra steps, I think, as a lot of limited government conservatives pause and says that's really not what we believe in. Right. And it's worth noting that Vice President Pence is not the only leading Republican who has criticized DeSantis's feud with Disney. You know, DeSantis may lag more than 30 points behind Trump in polls, but Pence is even further behind. And as you just noted, you know, four years as vice president, many years in Congress, many years as governor, he's not an unknown. Why are his numbers so low? Well, Elizabeth, for one, he hasn't entered this race yet. And I think that the reality is that at this point in the cycle in 2008, uh, Rudy Giuliani was leading by more than double digits. In the summer of 2011, when we had an Iowa straw poll, Michelle Bachman won that straw poll. In uh, 2016, there was, you know, a question, is it Jeb Bush or is it Scott Walker? There's a long road ahead here, and I think that it's important for Americans to actually see these candidates on a debate stage and be in a conversation with each other. And I think that's really when this gets started, probably toward the end of the summer. Right. Finally, I, I just want to ask your reaction, Mark, to former President Trump's comments in that town hall last week that he did not owe Pence an apology after his supporters rioted at the Capitol chanting, hang Mike Pence. You saw the danger coming that day. You warned the vice president's Secret Service detail to please protect him and be careful, be on alert. What was your reaction to that? 
Well, Elizabeth, I don't really care about whether the, the former president provides an apology or not. I think what is factually wrong and disingenuous is saying that, that he didn't think that the vice president was in any danger. It, it's, again, it really doesn't matter what President Trump thinks. I can assure you that the United States Secret Service tried to evacuate Pence three separate times from the Capitol, but he said, I'm not going to leave because that's not the image I want the world to see of the hallmark of democracy is a massive motorcade fleeing from the Capitol, and I'm going to stay right here. And, you know, they later shared with me after the whole events had, had expired that they were within inches of opening fire on that crowd. Wow. And they said, you know, this is the closest we've been in protecting a principal candidly since Hinckley shot Reagan. And I think that that, that gives you an a, a, a better impression of what the danger was rather than Donald Trump's version of what that danger was. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.